Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In this video, I'll show you how I worked on the 3D ring animation in After Effects. I'll show you how to work with Cinema 4D render, lights, camera, adding reflection and texture to 3D surfaces, and how to stylize your scene with gradient color. Lots of fun stuff, let's get started. First, let's create the 3D rings in RGB color. Let's create a composition, change the 3D render to Cinema 4D, draw a ellipse using ellipse tool, change the size to 800 by 800, make it into the center of the composition. Now we can change the layer to 3D. Let's go to two views. The left view is gonna be the active camera view and then the right view is gonna be the top view. Let's go down to the geometry options, change the extrusion to 100, and you can see there's a thickness added to the ring. Let's change the bevel style to convex and then change the bevel depth to three. Now we can go to this add button, add some color to the side. And then over here, we can change it to a green color. Click on okay. We're using RGB color to color this ring here. And then for the bevel, I'll go to bevel, add a bevel color, give me a warning. So I need to click on this ellipse before I'm adding the bevel. And then over here, I'll change it to blue. Click OK. If I zoom in really close to the active camera view, you can see there's a blue bevel goes around this ring. Call this one circle one. Now I'm going to duplicate this one, two, two times, and then make this one 65%, this one 40%. So we have three rings, exactly the same. Now it's time to add some lights and camera. So go to new, add some lights. This one, I'll call it parallel light one, change the intensity to 2000. And then for this one, for the right hand side view, I'll change it to the left view. I want this light to go from the top to the bottom. So I move this one to here and then shoot the light from the top down like this. That's good. And this is what you have. Now let's add another light. And for this one, I'll change it to 1000 intensity. And I want it to shoot from the front to the back. So this is my light from the front to the back. And now I'll add a third light from the back to the front. So I move this one to the back and then shoot it to the front like this. Now we have some good looking lights in the active camera view. After the light, I also want to add a camera. So let's go add a camera. In terms of a camera, I want a wide angle lens. So let's change it to 20 millimeters. Click on OK. I want this camera to be in the front drag it closer and then I want this point of view to be sitting on this ring here so I drag this point of view back let's add some animation to the rings and camera now in terms of animation I'm going to only be animating in the Y rotation so I add a keyframe in the Y rotation and then go to four seconds I'll change this one to negative one round second ring negative one round and then the first ring I would do one round so they're just basically rotating like this However, I also need some kind of different orientation for each ring. So for the first ring, I'll go to the first ring. And then for the orientation over here, I'll change it to 25 degree on the Z orientation. And then for the second ring, I'll change it to 300 over here. And then for the third ring, I'll change it to 90 orientation. Now, this is what it looks like. When it's rotating, and they'll go back to a full rotation, which is going back to their original state. That's looking pretty cool. Since we have the light, we need to add some reflection on these materials. Let's go down to the circle number one, and then let's go down the list to see the material options here. I need to change the diffuse percentage to 10%, and then maybe specular intensity to 100%, and then I'll change the specular shyness to 100%. So basically, these are the couple of properties you can manipulate to get some reflection in between these shapes. Um, sometimes I just change the percentage on the diffusion and also the shyness. You get a shiny material on these rings here. And you can also try to play with the reflection intensity. So for this case, I would change it to 50. And you can see we have some reflection going on. Let me copy the setting to the other two rings here. 
and now they have similar settings and there is some reflection going on in between these shapes when they are moving, interacting with each other because of the light that we added. If you want, we can also have the camera pulling out. Let's see if we add a position animation. Let's have the camera to be all the way in at the beginning. And then if we have this keyframe here, we're just pulling the camera out while the circles are rotating. So that's kind of the animation that we need. Let's keep it like that for now. Let me pre-compose these layers here. Call this one ring animation. Next step, we'll create the background and also color the rings with grayscale. So first we need a background. So we're gonna go to new solid. Let's add in a black background. And then we'll do a gradient ramp. We'll do a light to dark background like that. And then we'll do another one, also gradient ramp, but in this case, we'll do a radial gradient. And then we're gonna put the black here, white in here. And then for the black, I'm gonna change it to a lighter blue. And then for the white, I'm gonna change it to a dark blue. And now I can use this blending mode. Let's do a overlay. Similar to this. So that's my background looking pretty cool. I'm going to drop my ring inside. And now we need to color the side and the front and also the bevel of the ring. So let's go to add a solid color. Call this one side. And then we're going to add a gradient ramp for the side. We're going to do a white to light gray gradient. And then we're going to use set mat. Remember our side is a red color channel. So we're going to go back to the main composition. For the side, we're going to choose the ring animation. We're going to choose the source. And then if, instead of the alpha channel, we're going to use the red channel. So it's only coloring the side of the ring which is in the red channel and then we're gonna do a outside of the ring so let's duplicate this change this one to outside for the outside it's actually colored in the green so we're gonna change it to the green channel and then instead of the white to light gray we're gonna do a bigger contrast we're gonna do a light to darker gray so that we have more contrast for the green channel. And then for the bevel, which is in the blue channel, we're going to do a mid-tone. So we're going to do a lighter gray to a darker gray, almost like a mid-tone color, something like that. So we have highlight, which is the side, and then our side is the highlight, our outside is the highlight and the shadow, and then the bevel is the mid-tone. So we're going to have all these three layers coloring each side of the ring. Next, we'll add some color overlay on top of the rings to give it some gradient color. We need to go duplicate the ring animation composition, Command D, and then drag it on top of all these three layers. This one, let's call this one ring overlay. And then for the ring overlay, so for the ring overlay, let's search for the CC toner effects. And then for the CC toner, we're gonna change the tritone to pentone, which is gonna be highlights Bright, mid-tone, darkness, and shadows. So for each one, we need a specific color. Let's go to my color composition here. For the ring, for the highlight, let's do this color here. For the brights, let's do the blue here. Mid-tone, let's do the lighter blue. Dark tones, do the darker blue. And the shadows, let's do this here, over here. Now we have this color laid overlaid on top of my ring. However, this is called ring overlay, so we need to change the blending mode to overlay. So if I hide the color composition, we have a ring overlay. And then we also need to add some layer style to this ring overlay. So right click, go to layer style. First, we need to add some inner shadows. So let's go add a inner shadow. You can see there's some shadow going on around the edges. Um, let's do some settings in terms of the shadows. So for the inner shadows, let's sample this color here. And then we're going to do a higher opacity, like 100%. Let me hide the color composition here. And then for the distance, I'm going to make it 
really big, like 85. And then the size, I'll make it maybe 50. So this is gonna be my inner shadow. After the inner shadow, I need to add a inner glow as well. So let's go to layer style, let's go to inner glow. So for the inner glow, I'll have it set to screen 100%. Size is gonna be 50. So that's gonna be my inner glow. And then lastly, we're gonna add some colors. So we'll go add another layer style, which is the gradient overlay. So we have a gradient overlay. And then in terms of the overlay, I need to edit the overlay. So over here, let's edit the gradient color. Let's sample this color here. And then let's sample this color here. We can change the angle if we want. And then we can also change the scale, maybe tone it out a little bit. Let's change the blending mode to overlay as well over here. Let me turn off my color panel here. This is what it looks like. I think it's looking pretty cool. So if I go collapse the layer here, this is what it's looking like right now. A lot of details you can see. And then the next thing I need to add after the ring overlay, I need to add another color overlay on top of it. So I'll go to my rectangle tool. Let's double click to add a rectangle tool. And then let's go delete the stroke add a gradient fill color and I want this to go from blue to yellow to pink I'll just drag it over here like this and then I'll change the blending mode to overlay and now you can see there's a lot more color going on just looking pretty cool so this overlay right now is too heavy let's go to my ring overlay let's go to maybe the Gradient overlay, change the opacity to, let's say 75%. That's, that might be a better opacity, but you can see the shyness on the surface of my ring is creating a lot of reflection, which is what I like. And you can change the settings however you want to get slightly different results. Final thing, let's add some light rays and light bursts to complete the scene. After this, I'll also just add an adjustment layer over here. And this one, I need to add a couple more effects. First of all, I want to add a effects called CC light rays. So for the CC light rays, it's going to basically bursting out some rays, almost like there's a light behind these rings. I'll just put in the center here. And whenever it kind of interacts with the ring, it's going to shoot out some light behind it which is looking pretty cool. You can also animate this if you want. So it's gonna give you some interesting effects. If I just put it in the center, it should be able to interact with the rings whenever it crosses in the center. And especially over here, you can see there's a couple of light rays that's shooting out from the center. That's looking pretty cool. I like that. And then I also want to add another called CC light burst. And for the light burst, it basically gives you a, almost like a motion blur. So we can change the ray lens to a smaller amount, maybe five. And then this is going to be effects it gets. So if I play the animation, if you feel like the color and the effects are too much, what you can also do is uh, let's go to this ring overlay. And then we can also turn off the inner shadow and the inner glow. I think that might also work out. So these two properties are just gonna give you some extra controls if you want it. But if I turn these two off and only leave a gradient overlay, this is the effects we get. It's also looking pretty cool. And then we have all the reflections and the details within the ring because of the light that's casting outside from three different directions that we did before. I think I like it better with these two effects turned off. Let's see the final animation. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to check out our project file shop for many amazing After Effects project files to improve your skills. If you're serious about improving your animation skills and become a professional, check out our Motion Insider membership at motioncircles.com to access our beginner animation courses trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.